Hello, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Gina. Gina, I'm so glad you're here with me today uh, to do this interview. Uh, you're my life coach. Um, and you also have a radio show that's interna it's international, isn't it? It's called uh, Living Lighter. It is. And uh, what I want to talk about tonight is how do we manifest? like a queen, <laughs> you always taught me that. Uh, how do you manifest the life of your dreams? And I wanna show the audience of how, you know, you were a certain way at some point. I think we all go through struggles in life, including myself. And I think the people that have changed the world so deeply, you know, have gone through darkness, struggles, like there's nothing perfect in the world. Um, you don't come from like <laughs> a TV reality show uh, of perfection and then you teach the world. You have to have had some kind of transformation. And I want you to talk about your transformation, why you became a life coach, and uh, what is your philosophy behind your teaching. Absolutely. Sure. Well, thank you, Irma. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me on Irma <laughs> on the raw edge. I love that. <laughs> You're doing amazing and manifesting this business and I'm so honored to be a part of it. So thank you, first of all. Yeah. So my name is Gina Silvestri and seven years ago, I weighed 300 pounds mm -hmm. and I had 17 medical diagnoses, official diagnoses on my doctor's record. And I was surviving on disability insurance. So I was having a challenging time, lots of challenges in my life. And then I came across uh, this weird and wonderful way of living <laughs> that we now called raw food. We yeah. now call raw food, uh, which actually is a very normal way of eating, you know, <laughs> I know. For, for time, sure. for time yeah. immemorial. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but we, we've labeled it raw food now and it's become this big diet, which, which I did. I'm glad it did because it caught my attention when I was lost in that, in that place of not living my best self and not shining my brightest. So basically how it happened is I ran into a childhood friend of mine who, uh, the last time I had seen him was, um, he had weighed a lot. Uh, the last time I'd seen him. And then he had transformed his whole entire life. And we were in a situation where we only had two minutes to talk. Uh, my friend had her baby, just to make a long story short, but she had her baby. And I was jumping in the car to go up north, actually, just north of where you are, to her cottage. Oh. And when I saw him, he was shining and he was slim and he was healthy. And I said, what happened? What did you do? And he said, raw food. And so, you know, it was a six hour drive north to the cottage. And the whole time, my friend didn't want to talk about it because she was frustrated with her husband's lifestyle. She said he was a hippie and she said he was doing all this weird meditation and she, she was just frustrated. So she said, I never want to hear those two words again. Don't ask me what it's about. And I said, OK. <laughs> so that whole ride, I was wondering and thinking, you know, and, and it's so wonderful. It's a wonderful synchronicity that I was driving up into nature while I was contemplating all of this. And so it was, it was, you know, I was wondering what is raw food and, and what could it be? And um, I discovered it on my own because back, back then there was as many uh, internet sites and I didn't even think to look on the internet. What I did was I went into the grocery store and I said, what can I eat here that is raw? And I just <laughs> ate, my body was drawn to the watermelons for whatever reason. And I just ate watermelons like there was no tomorrow. And I said to myself, as I felt better and better every single day, I said, I'm just going to try this for 30 days. I'm just going to, I've tried Jenny Craig. I've tried all those other diets, the cabbage diet, cabbage soup diet and um, low fat and non-fat and high protein, you know, Atkins. I tried them all, <laughs> nothing had worked. So I said, why not try this, you know? And while I was in nature, I was thinking, you know, raw, raw is natural, raw is nature. It's got to make some sense, you know? So it did, it really did. After 10 days, I knew, Irma, that it was the way for me, connecting back to um, my natural way of being and living 
and connecting to nature through one of the most intimate ways by eating life, the life force, the vital energy and aliveness was really key in my journey. It opened the door to all of this wonderful work that I'm honored to do now with people. And you asked, yeah, you asked how I became a life coach and how I became a life coach was, well, it started out with, you know, after I lost 150 pounds and I healed all of my medical diagnoses within one year, it was all gone. I, I, yeah, go ahead. Because it was, it was because of the way you were eating that you had those illnesses. And, you know, I have people coming to me right now Mm -hmm. that have arthritis and, you know, different uh, illnesses and I, I'm not a nutritionist so I don't want to be like you know but I know that dairy meat and all these fast foods or coca-cola and all these things I want to tell them like quit those and your body will heal because I've done the same thing you did through mm-hmm. raw foods so I, I it's it's funny how some people are drawn or like how you've been guided and other people are still living in you know thinking it's like extreme or it's like fanatical or like what do you say about that Mm -hmm. like what what do you say about that because like why Mm -hmm. have some of us been guided like that with the light and other people are still struggling Mm -hmm. and I want to help you know certain people like change their bodies yes you ask great questions I love (laughs) that question yeah why why are some of us led and For me, what I think it is, Irma, is it's readiness. I think it's a matter of us being ready. We're just ready. Uh, I remember when I hired my first coach, I said, this is all because of you. And she said, no, you're you're just ready. And I said, no, it's you. (laughs) And she said, no, you're just ready, honey. And, And I really believe that. I've learned that because I can see it with my clients now is, you know, it's a readiness. It's a natural openness and you know, um, a willingness to try anything like I said I was. And it sounds like you may have been in that state too, where you you were just willing to try because we all had that, didn't we? We all had that, that way of thinking that, oh, that's a little weird. It is. It's extreme in this modern world, in this society. Yeah, you're right. And you're like my mirror. You're like mirroring back to me. You're just teaching me what I already know. And I'm, I'm, that's what it is, right? So once you listen to the message that the person is saying and it resonates with you, it's because you already knew exactly. deep down inside you. Right? I always say that. I say, I'm here to remind you. I'm just yeah. reminding you what you already know. And if you're drawn to me, then it's because you can see yourself in me. You can see your soul resonating with my soul, which I've, you know, all it is, Irma, is a matter of getting out of our own way. So I've done the work to get it out of, I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm still growing and expanding like everybody else right alongside all of you all. But I've done so much work through my transformation that I've just allowed, I've gotten out of my own way and allowed my soul to shine and shine bright so that every other person can see it. And then they can choose whether they want to, you know, say, maybe I'll just laugh at that hippie stuff and just try it for 30 days and just, you know, move it out of the way and say, well, look, if it worked for that person, if she could lose a whole person's worth of weight and heal all of her medical diagnoses doing this weird thing. And, you know, Irma, what I would say to them too is nowadays it's so easy. I mean, the first thing I would do is live by example, which you are right? You, you focus on you, you concentrate on you, you make your light shine as bright as you can. And then you know what, invite them to a restaurant or invite them over to try the food, you know, and you can make the food that they usually eat. Yeah. And then add some wonderful dishes. That's what I used to do. I used to take people to live. I love live cafe. <laughs> I used to take them there and just say, try this, you know, meat eaters, they would try the, um, the nut pates, and they would love it. And they would actually say, Oh, I don't feel as full. And I had more energy after the meal. And wow, I could actually eat that. And I never thought I would hear that from anybody. So yeah, I think for me, it was uh, when I first started to do the raw foods, I had so much energy come up. And I felt connected to divinity and source, like something happened with that whole, it wasn't just about food. It was about like connecting to source and every, like I was buzzing with energy. So that's what happened to me. But I think that I didn't, I don't even have to explain what I do. 
at how I eat. I walk into a room and people are drawn and I allow them to ask me questions if they want to. I don't want to reform anyone that's not ready. Like I want people to ask me questions and then I'll tell them what I'm doing, but I don't want to have to go out there and like recruit or like sell myself or, you know, you know, I always say to people, just um, try it. Use your own body as an experiment. I did that. And what do you have to lose for 30 days, really, if you're juicing and you're doing wheatgrass and you're trying it? At least try it. Open your mind. Try it. And then let me know how you feel. And that's my philosophy. Hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I love your style. I love the style of leading by example and just shining your light. Mm -hmm. And the people who naturally come come to you and are drawn to you, those are the people that you're meant to connect with. You know, yeah, and we just yeah. let go and we trust and we let the divine order of things be the way they are. That's when synchronicity happens. Yeah. That's when so-called miracles are allowed to happen. And I just wanted to say, as you were mentioning juice, <laughs> you know, green juice, I'm drinking this delicious juice. The first ingredient is love. And then <laughs> apple, <laughs> apple. See, we all come in touch with that source that you're talking about when we yeah. go into this lifestyle. And all it is is returning to ourselves. But even the companies who are making these juices do it. They say love first. They've been awakened. Yeah. They've been, yeah. you know, they've been reconnected to the self that they were born with right around all children are light and shining and beautiful and just full of creativity yeah. and magnetism and energy and love and you know connection energy and unity consciousness which is what we're calling it now as adults yeah. so yeah it's I find that, that uh, when you're a child you're more connected to that like you don't worry about tomorrow you don't worry about the past you forgive more easily you're out there playing um in the know, moment yeah and i was looking at a, vi a video of uh emoto the water mm. how it changes under certain uh, consciousness love mm -hmm. hate and you can see it on youtube i've, I've seen all his movies i love it yeah. so we mm -hmm. if we created water bottles with the word love peace and joy you can actually change your tap water do you think you could change your tap water into drinkable water even though it has fluoride and um you know i uh, listen to certain people in the raw food movement about uh, food and there's some, certain people that are saying you know we're going from carbon dna to crystal dna and how you know you know with the mercury in our teeth and like uh, the fluoride in our water that's like, uh, you know, touching our penal gland and stuff like that. Like people don't realize how it's affecting us on a DNA level. It's not just about food. It's about love. It's about becoming more of who we are as humans, going back to the way we were created. And yeah. 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 And I love your style of, you know, not asking anybody to change. Instead, what I love doing, and you know this, I always suggest over and over again is to be grateful. Aren't we grateful to have found that knowledge and to found the words yeah, to explain yeah. it and to found to have found beautiful juice that we can drink and enjoy and yeah, to have yeah. opened to, you know, the energies that allow like minds and like hearts and like spirits to connect with one another when yeah. we celebrate that and we stay in that energy we get to be the shining examples and we get to be in joy and be aligned with ourselves and our true selves so again it's about focusing in our own field right focusing in our own field and celebrating in our own field and being happy being truly at peace and happy and in joy and you know and free this is what yes, free is yes. The yes, first thing me. That you, you, you've taught me was to be doing more of what I love because I was saying like I came to a point I had a car accident and I've been healing for the last six months I've had a lot of help from raw, the raw food community actually mm -hmm. uh, you know Mark is sending me his uh, green powders and you know you know telling he was telling me about aloe vera and cactus and stuff like that so anyway to make a long story short, between positive thinking and food, I've been healing really quickly. Um, there's like about 10, 15 pounds of 
body weight I'd like to lose right now, but I'm going to be doing juices and stuff like that to do that. But in the meantime, what I want to say is, <laughs> is you know, the power of manifestation of like, um, you know, how you brought me from a low vibrational state, because I always told you from the beginning that I was co-creating my life. And, um, you know, I, I just got tired of like, working for other people. I'm a massage therapist. I, I went into massage therapy because I have a healing heart and I have, I love giving to other people. So I went into that. Don't ever go into a career, any career, even acting, whatever it is, don't do it just for the money. Do it because you want to mm -hmm. serve other people. That's the real foundation of success but you taught me to do more of what I like every day because we were trying to align me with what I love to do so you taught me to you know play go up, do go do what you love that was a, and it took time and it was like wow <laughs> what do I love to do and it was like wow you know and it was like Right now, I have people waving at me constantly. When I walk out the door, they're like, hey, hi, how are you? And I haven't said a word. And I'm like, whoa, dogs and squirrels are following me. Yeah, your vibration shifted. And yeah. it shifted very quickly, yeah, very yeah. quickly. And that's what happens. And the reason why I teach about tapping into what you love is because of something you said. You want to serve other people. Mm -hmm. So what more magnificent and beautiful way to serve other people is there than being in your greatest joy first. Exactly. Right. Exactly. When you're doing what you're lo you love and you're, you're treating yourself like a queen every single day, exactly. you first, right? Remember we always talk about the airplane analogy, right? If you were sitting on an airplane and you had a young boy beside you and you had an elderly gentleman on the other side of you and there was one mask and the plane was going down, who are you going to put the mask on? Well, I was a flight attendant for a while, so I know. Were you? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, so you did know. You yeah. did know it was you. Okay. Yeah. Well, most people say the little child, okay? But we know that it's us, right? And I'm so grateful that we're sharing this with all of our listeners today because when we take care of ourselves first, and not just, you know, the basics. I mean luxury. Really taking care of ourselves, manifesting what we want being who we want to be, living as the person we want to live and living as a reflection of our divine self, which is magnificent and glorious and, you know, yeah. deserving of all beauty and beautiful experiences. That's what we came on this planet to do is to experience amazing beauty and love and sensations and harmony and vibrancy and unity as human beings. You know, the opportunity is phenomenal it's just it's gorgeous i love using that word lately gorgeous you know, like when i when i went into this uh, path and i was ready for it I, i'm going to tell the viewers that it's it you go through like like your deprogramming old ways yes. that you were taught of like, like with the fear based limitations mm -hmm. into unlimited love so to go from there and everything that you were taught from childhood till now it's it's uh you go through a valley let me tell you because i did like mm -hmm. up and down like a roller coaster and you if you really want something you're gonna go through it it's it's not an easy path it's like a warrior path mm -hmm. and um just i just realized that um, you know, masculine energy of like doing mm -hmm. into feminine energy of receiving. My receiving energy was really blocked. Mm -hmm. I thought I've been like holding this pattern of I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I can't receive. Um, so as far as manifestation or manifesting, there's a lot of books out there, you know, like magic, the secret. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say what Dr. Wayne Dyer always says, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wasn't able to, okay, I'm sending out my wish 
to the universe and I'm uh, blah, blah, blah. But my vibration had to go up and I had to also allow myself to receive. And that that's what I've been working on. Can you You've like, been working on it brilliantly too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you say something about that? You know, like, um, yeah, as far as manifestation, like the, the, the queen of manifestation, the queen of like being able to draw because we're always co-creating constantly. Yeah. So I've been up till now creating who I am. Yeah. But you're, you've shown me another way of like moving up the ladder. So what do you say? Well, I say that the process of manifestation is about raising your frequency. Okay. It's about getting into the frequency of what you want, literally, so that you can attract it. Okay. So there are all these recipes and step by step programs and processes out there hmm. that tell you how to manifest what you want. And basically, I believe that's what each and every program is doing out there including mine. That's what we're doing. We're yeah. lifting your vibration so that you get into the zone, so to speak, the frequency where you are a match to everything you want. So most of us, you know, most of people who are desiring something that they don't have, uh, we're desiring either wealth, so money, more health, or relationships you know, the, the love of our life. And these are all general, common desires that are floating around the collective consciousness, okay? This is what everybody wants on some level or another. Right. And you mentioned, I love how you mentioned everything in my first step, basically. You know, you said you weren't sure what you wanted at first. You had no idea. You had, you know, you had a little bit of muddiness, we could call it, to use a metaphor from nature, you know? <laughs> so um, the first step in my program is to ask for what you want. And it sounds very, very simple to ask for what you want. It sounds like you just say, you know, I want $50,000 at the end of this month. And then it's that simple, but it's not. <laughs> So the, the point about knowing what you want is very, very clear. And all of this, again, is about raising your vibration. So we are, all of this work leads you to that so that you can get in, into that zone. Um, but first of all, you want to get very clear about what you want, okay? Because as far as the universe is concerned, it doesn't want to just know the general aspects that everybody wants because the energy is going to stay exactly the same as it is right now around you. And you know this from your own work. We got very detailed, more detailed than you ever have gotten in your life about what you want, right? And I even encourage you to write down the phone number of the realtor you might call when you get there or write down your destinations on your beautiful travel journey that you're doing. And, you know, get really detailed. And we don't want to get into the hows. We don't want to, just, you know, get attached to expectations about how it's all going to manifest. But we do want to be very clear about what we want, because another step later in the in the program and in the process is embodying it. And in order to embody what you want so that you can be what you want, like Dr. Dyer said, yeah, uh, you definitely need to know exactly what you want to experience, the experience that you want to have and details are what helps you with that. Because you want yeah. to be able to smell it and touch it and feel it and hear it and taste it, right? I, I've Every been day. able to do that with um, a soulmate aspect that I, I yesterday did something with that. And, you know, um, as far as like, not yet with my living space, because I don't know. I think it's still the West Coast of Canada, but because I have a European passport and mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, because I'm traveling for 16 months, that's what I plan to do now. That's pretty clear with, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how many countries I'm going to see during that time, but that's what I'm headed for. I, as far as a physical house, mm -hmm. I have like a log house. I, I want to be by the ocean. So I don't know. There you go. That's yeah, where you start right there. You start picturing waves, smell the waves, yeah. you know, smell the salt of the water, yeah. breathe that in. You know, you mentioned the movie, the secret. And do you remember the guy who wanted to manifest this great car? He would literally sit in yeah. his chair like oh, this, yeah. you know, <laughs> he would sit in it and he would just like close his eyes and he'd be like, yeah. vroom, vroom. he'd step on the pedal and everything. <laughs> People thought he was crazy. Yeah. You know? Uh, people, I know. A lot of, uh, you know, people, 
the general mainstream, a lot of people think that great, you know, people that, like that you mentioned at the beginning, you know, people who change the world are crazy. They actually try to lock them up and think they're insane. And meanwhile, they're just bringing in, they're ushering in new concepts and abilities to us humans that our mind in its, you know, in its primal stages can't understand and can't comprehend. And you know what, there's no point in trying to comprehend it in that way at at the early stages. Just do what that guy's doing. Get in your chair and start dreaming. (laughs) Well, you know what, Tina, I think everybody that's changed the world, whether it was with uh, free energy, electricity, um, I can name so many people, Einstein, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. let's, Mm -hmm. let's keep going. Like they had to break away from mainstream thinking from what the popular belief is to change the world and we always make fun of these people and I think that a lot of people that have changed the world like drastically have gone through a lot of pain like I don't say I'm not saying that you have to have a lot of pain and trauma to change the world but it feels like it's a portal into um being somebody like if you don't die from it it's a mm-hmm. it's an open door to say hey you know what i've been here and this is how i transformed my life and i want to help others if you share your story and you're brave enough to, to share the story that you not only can you survive it that you went through it for a reason and then now you have a message for the world yes. so that they can transform with you do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for mentioning that because that yeah. brings me to something that you and I have talked about too is getting your desires white hot, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you're experiencing strife and friction and resistance and pain, then your desire is going to be a lot hotter and higher to get out of it and move out of it. Like when yeah. I hired my first coach, I was like, I am ready. Yeah. And <laughs> last last night somebody filled up my application online and you know it says one to ten on the scale of one to ten, how ready are you? And she put a hundred plus and I was like, Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? She had a lot of pain. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, whatever it is, it's resistance. And and resistance is a gift, right? We got to switch our mindset. It's all about mindset. You know that. That's the training. That's the real training. Is just letting go of our old conceptions, the ones that block us and the ones that that stop us and keep us from going forward. And I have a little poem if you want, if you don't mind me sharing. <laughs> it's related to that. <laughs> it's your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something easy to remember. And and it's a way to get out of your mind and transcend the programmed mind that even those, you know, the greats that we were talking about that changed the world, they had to transcend. And a lot of them did it through pain. You know, we all go through pain. We all go through strife. Um, but to me, the sign of a master is somebody who doesn't stay there long anymore. They've transcended it. They've hit that point of, you know, this is step two in the manifestation process is commitment, you know, where you hit the point where you will do whatever it takes. You know, that's well, commitment. You know, for me, Tina, <laughs> it's like I, I've gotten rid of things that don't serve me anymore, people that didn't serve me anymore. I didn't want to be in that energy anymore. It's old energy and and uh, I've moved myself from not staying too long in negativity, whether it's my thoughts or, you know, I want to love more, love the world. Uh, whatever happened in the past is in the past. I'm not that person anymore. People still hold on to, oh, what you did to them like four years ago. <laughs> and that's their story. It's not your story anymore. And that's one thing I want to say that it's really challenging how you have to forgive yourself and you know even though people might not forgive you for the things that you've done but you forgive yourself you move forward like a warrior and you become what you want to become right so absolutely you start to believe that you're worth it right Irma that you deserve it yeah you fill yourself up and that's what I was saying you know at the beginning is you know that's number one is filling yourself up first giving yourself permission, Mm -hmm. you know, we 
talked about asking for what you want. Well, if you don't believe that you can have permission, you can't even ask with much power and much might and much manifestation energy that you need, you know? So that's the first part. I love that you mentioned that too. You yeah, know, it's yeah. really <laughs> loving yourself and, and believing that you're deserve, deserving of love and all the riches in the world. A lot of us have mind money programming that is really blocking us and stopping us from moving forward. And when we transcend that, woo, it happens fast. You know, you yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, I do know that. Yeah. I just feel for people that are in prison that have committed, you know, things that we believe is unforgivable. What do you say to that? Like, with your mindset, like, how do we change the whole concept of that? And mm -hmm. how, you know, when someone does something really tragic, um, mm -hmm. shooting, bombing, mm -hmm. whatever you see in the world going on, like, how do you, how, what would you say to humanity? to heal all that mm -hmm. how do we change that yeah okay so the first thing we want to do is pay attention to what we're focusing on okay because you know we can think of all of the strife and the poverty and the horrendous things that happen and believe me people in my family they watch the news 24 7 they have it blaring on all of their <laughs> TV. they're watching it constantly and, you know and they're like lots the door like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't lock my door <laughs> I know but it's just you it's the yeah. fear mentality that I was joking about right so what we focus on here's my question how are we going to help the world if we're focusing on the pain and the horror and we're putting ourselves in a state of panic right we want to empower people don't we we want to empower people and um we'll, wherever we put our focus expands so yeah. if we start to focus on the fear and the poverty and the strife, that's what we're going to get more of. That's what we're going to create more of in our world. And my question would be is, how are you going to help people if you're doing that? How are you going to help them? How are you going to shift the world if you're doing that? Whereas if we take our focus off it, not in a denial sense, we acknowledge it. And again, that helps our fire burn white hot. That's what gets us going even more. That's why we're doing what we're doing is because we want to shift the world. But think about this, Sarma. If most people were focusing on the beauty that's available, the rest of the population that's not killing others <laughs> and, you know, and that's not you know, losing their minds and shooting everybody in a McDonald's. What if we were all focusing on the beauty and the organizations out there that are popping up everywhere to bring people together and to raise unity consciousness in the world? What if we all focused on that? What would happen? Don't you think all of these other things would dissipate? Naturally, yeah, I think that the change in the world that people want to see right now uh, starts with yourself. Yes. And yeah. when you change yourself, because there's only one source of energy, we're all coming from that source. So we're all connected. And people, we say that, but, I, you know, feeling it is another thing, is that we're all one, we're all brothers and sisters. We're, you know, if I'm like not thinking right and my my consciousness is not vibrating high and I'm not aware of what I'm, my actions have effect on everything on the whole planet and what I'm doing. Like that's where it starts, right? So absolutely, it starts with you, and then you get into this place that you're so full of of self love, and this is the other key point regarding what you just said, the tragedies in the world because they do affect us, okay when our energy fields aren't strong, uh, they do affect us, and they can knock us out too. So the place we want to get to, Irma, is the place of divine trust, knowing that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Everything is divinely orchestrated, yeah. right? Yeah. So everything is happening as, exactly as it's supposed to be. You know, people talk about the big money systems, how they're so angry at them and they want them all dissolved in the corporate systems, but they're actually holding a place for us right now that we need right at this point in space and time and it's the same with those tragedies and mother earth when she clears out countries with her you know her tornadoes and her hurricanes so everything truly is uh the way it's supposed to be and this is acceptance can you feel yourself like relaxing even more as as you yeah. breathe into that and i, that I feel like it, everything's serving even ourselves, like as co-creators, like um, if something's happening to you in an environment, it's it's meant to be and everyone's playing their role to serve you, to maybe download a program that no longer serves you so that you can grow 
and it's perfect. Everything's perfect the way it is, and there's no mistakes in the universe. And there's opportunity in every moment. So if you do have strife in your atmosphere, it's opportunity for you to expand even more mm -hmm. into your highest place of love and forgiveness. Yeah. And, you know, and, and at first, like you said, it may seem like a challenge. It's, it's like running a marathon. That's all it really is. I mean, yeah. you and I have only been working together for over a month, I think it's been. So, and, yeah. and you know, you're already, you're already flying across the world. You got your web set up. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. so we want to talk about that briefly because we want to make sure that, you know, people aren't thinking that you're going to be in that place for years. It's just like running a marathon. Your muscles are sore at first and you're like, you know, a lot of us have a lot of what I call mental laziness. It's not a judgment. It's just the way that we are trained and we're programmed and we're, you know, especially now with all of our electronics everywhere, our minds are just lazy. They just want to watch TV or play on Facebook. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of retraining and, yeah. and, and tapping in. I do a lot of energy work, as you know. So tapping into that source. And, you know, that's what I'm here for, Irma, to remind you that you are this beautiful being of light. You're, you're more beautiful than you could ever imagine. And to align with that and to treat yourself like that and to serve from that place is the greatest gift that we can tap into and receive during our time on this planet. I yeah. mean, it's a short time that we're here. You it's know? amazing that we have the gift of life, that we're coming we're coming here to serve, that we're not just placed here to mm -hmm. have a dull job. We're here for a purpose, and we affect the whole. Mm -hmm. And so I want to ask, what's your uh, five top manifestation uh, practices that you want to tell people to do daily so that they can start co-creating and manifesting? Sure. Okay. So if I can just ask for clarity, what do you mean by manifestation practice? Uh, just that mean? Uh, manifesting more of what they want. Like let's say it's health or abundance or their soulmate or like this, this is what everybody desires, right? Sure. So how do you say what's your daily, like this is a must that you, like this will yes. give you results. Okay. The number one thing is absolutely, you know, number one hands down is gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude is the power behind everything. Okay. When we are in a place of consistent gratitude that is strong and that it's regular. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the more you do it and the more often you do it and the more often you're in that place, then the greater escrow you build, right? The greater power you build behind you. The more you are in that vibration, the quicker and the easier and the more graceful everything gets. It's absolutely key. So one of the things I love to suggest is momentum journals. And those are little journals. I buy just little journals mm -hmm. and I write down in them, you know, five to 10 things every single morning when I wake up before my monkey mind even starts dancing. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> monkey mind is what I jokingly refer to as the programmed mind. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it serves a, a purpose too. So there's no resistance or criticism there at all. It really does serve a purpose. So, um, but yeah, so you write down things that you are so appreciating in that moment, you know, like, Maybe you earned money the day before from a client for your first time, or maybe you just, you know, someone's like you said, when, I loved when you wrote to me and you said that all of a sudden I'm waking up and people are saying good morning to me as soon as I come outside the door. <laughs> I loved that, you know, so celebrating the good morning. I'm all about celebration. So celebrating, appreciating, because all we have right now, or all we have Irma is right now. That's all we have. Yeah. is this yeah. present moment and we can expand into it and we can dance into it and really enjoy every single moment. And this helps us to do that. So you, you just have a little journal, you write it down and you can also, you know, every time you have a challenge with in an area in your life, say it's money, you can create an actual journal just for money or even for a specific person. Like let's say your mother is just driving you crazy lately and, and, you know, and it's really creating resistance and it's slowing down or neutralizing your vibration that you're working so hard at, so to speak, you create an, a journal for your mom and you sit there and you focus on what you love about her until the momentum builds that you're back into forgiveness. It's like it melts all of the stuff that you don't need. Because we're here to serve our not only our highest good, but everyone around us, right? Everyone who's around us is is meant to be here. They're playing a game and they're, you know, they're playing their role for us. 
really, <laughs> to reach our highest place in evolution. So having said that, though, when do you let go of people in your life? because they're not serving you like I, I just want it for people that have parents that are toxic or friends that are toxic without like you know how we get fuzzy about that mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> well, yeah I love that question you ask great questions so <laughs> the, the thing <laughs> yes. so the thing you want to do again is come back to you okay raise your vibration as high as possible plug into the highest possible vibration available to you and choose from there okay so from that vibration we are going to treat people with love regardless and we may choose you know i've personally had people in my life along the way where i've chosen i don't want daily live contact with them yeah. so i will send them text messages with a beautiful you know there's so many pictures available now and i send them love that way you know what I mean? So there's different avenues that you can choose um, that you can still stay connected. But I would encourage people not to get too much into their head and analyze everything, like why they should be here, why they shouldn't. You know, instead, I really would shift into that gratitude because you'll find that you don't really need to let go of anybody. Again, it may be just, a, you know, well, right now I want a bit of distance because I'm doing, we want full responsibility. So I'm doing uh, work that I need to just be, you know, uh, incubated for right now. You know, full responsibility is where our power lives too. And it's not, you know, this is another tip. You asked for five tips. And it's not about, you know, uh, self-criticism or being harsh on yourself and saying, I'm going to, you know, I need to be more responsible. It's being loving with yourself and saying, you know what? I am so powerful that I can create everything around me. And in fact, everything that is around me, I have created. And so they are all here for me to grow from and expand upon. So right now in this moment, what would I like to choose with my mother? What, would that, what do I need in this moment? Never mind tomorrow, never mind because of why or the past. In this moment, what would I like? What do I need? And go from there. Like I like to picture just being my cat. You know, I've had the same cat for 13 years and he just lives moment to moment. You know, <laughs> when he's taking a step, he puts out his paw and he takes a step. You know what I mean? So if it feels good in that moment to say hi to your mom, say hi to your mom. <laughs> so there, there, there's no like cutting off anybody, but you don't have, you could if you felt like you had to, but you can always choose, always in any relationship to choose love and just stay who you are and be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's no right or wrong in anything, right, Irma? There's no judgment. So whatever feels good to you in this moment, um, what I would just say to that is the highest vibration is always love and peace. When you can extend love to every single being around you, I get chills just saying that yeah. because we all have people that it's harder for us to do so. Yeah. But when we, realize, when we realize the reason it's harder for us to do so is because of something in us that we just need to clear out, it totally transforms everything. And, and it gives us the opportunity to raise our frequency even higher. That's what they're here for. Yeah, it's a, it's a projection of your stuff, right? That you're putting on them and limiting this, yourself. Yeah. This is advanced stuff that we're talking about. But you, you get here very quickly when you just take these little steps like my cat. My cat's name is Pepe. <laughs> And he just walks around. You know? He doesn't overthink anything. If something yeah. spooks him, he gets spooked and he gets startled and then he calms down again. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, just I do. I, I know how much you, you love nature and you go in, uh, in the woods and you recharge your battery there. I've been, I mean, you haven't seen my video about me going into the city. <laughs> yeah, I did. I love that. And it's like, yeah, that was my spiritual practice because when you have when I'm here, there's no one bothering me. I'm a hermit. But when I go into the city and I see people asking for money and there's, you know, traffic and I have to park and all this blah, 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 crazy city stuff, like, then I'm tested. Where am I? Like, how do I react? Like, it's easy to be alone in the Tibetan mountains, <laughs> sure. you know, meditating for a hundred years. But when you go into the world, that's when you're tested, right? So I just want you had my attention at the, from the beginning of that video because I'm a nature girl. So I was like, <laughs> spiritual practice. Is <laughs> and I love nature. Trust me. I, uh, like, I I'm going to end up living in nature. But, you know, like, uh, I love New York City. I love cities. Because me too. 
there's like-minded people, there's creativity, there's no judgment like there is sometimes in smaller communities about being gay or having blue hair or what are you eating, <laughs> you know, where, you know, I don't know, sometimes you just, you know, like I always want to inspire people to go travel and see how other people live and you'll appreciate where you're coming from. And you transcend things, you know, I've traveled a lot and, yeah. and you you transcend things so quickly when you travel. I'm so excited to watch your journey unfold. I want to see all of your videos that you take. And, you know, I loved that market video because you took me in the market with you. You yeah. know, I just, I love your style of doing videos. So I'm very excited about that. And also because you're so open, Irma, you share about your journey uh, very openly. So I'm excited to hear what traveling does. You've got beautiful insight. And, you know, that's what I found when I was traveling is that it, it really helped me transcend and go through this process much quicker because like you said your environment's always changing ah. and there are things everywhere that will these are invitations okay everything's an invitation so the man who's begging for money it's an invitation to either lift your vibration or lower it's mm -hmm. up to you everything that happens even an earthquake even a flood you know it's an invitation you rise above and start grab a bucket and start scooping out or hug the child or you know what I mean or you can have a fit and throw yourself on the ground and give up you know what I mean you have choices every single moment of every single day and yeah. when you're traveling you really learn that because like you said you know they all come at once all of them like you could have no money you can't find your credit card you, you, <laughs> and someone's you can have your, money your and, purse stolen whatever exactly and you, you get, get lost react, right yeah you get lost you don't virtually you are. <laughs> when your purse is getting snatched <laughs> <laughs> yeah and again know. it's all about it's all about how quickly how long you stay there how yeah. quickly you come out of it and that's great practice when you're traveling because it all happens at once so you're like okay and and when you can just sit in that space and meditation really strengthens your muscle in this regard you can just sit in that space and watch everything and go hmm, okay well I can do this or I can do this you know, I can get drawn into my old pattern with my mom, who's driving yeah. me bonkers, or I could just sit here <laughs> and, and, and be the light and be the love and, and be that space. You know, we all just want to be received and heard. So what if we were always that infinite space for people? You know, and connecting to nature, that's another one of my huge tips, Irma, yeah. because you learn how to be that space. You become that space. I go there every single day for at least an hour and you become the trees, the space for people. Yeah. For me, with this journey is I felt that the divinity, like the unmanifested, manifested my body so it could live through my body. Mm, so I could see its hands, its, its eyes, its legs. And I, I didn't feel like my identity of Irma anymore. I felt like, oh, wow, this unmanifested energy, which is in everyone and everything, mm. did this so it could feel things. So it was amazing. That's it was an so amazing beautiful. like transformation for me to feel that. And, uh, Wow, <laughs> that's a, like I'm not identified with the name Irma, female massage mm -hmm. therapist. That's all labels. Underneath mm -hmm. that shell is like the fourth, the God fourth, the yes. source, the divinity, and it just wants to play. Really, it does. It does. It wants to play, and it wants to enjoy all the beauty that's available to us on this earth. Right. So yeah, speaking yeah. of, you know, permission to be rich and permission to have everything you want. A lot of women struggle with that. And and what you're saying right now solves it all. You you phrased it so beautifully, Irma, it brought tears to my eyes. It's so beautiful because, you know, truly you are, are that divine light. You are here to play. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to play the violin, then there are violins for you. You know what I mean? If you want to paint, there's so many colors for you to paint with. God, source, the universe wants to come through you and play and shine and show others beauty. And, so you know, amazing. having money is a big part of that, to have that. Yeah, you, we're abund it's abundant. It created the whole universe. So it, I feel like this is a gift really, yeah. in a human body is a gift that yeah. no one else can have. Yeah. And you can only create material stuff here from the unmanifested to the manifested and co-create it in a material sense because it's a holographic universe, you know, quantum physics 
explains that through energy. You can only experience it here on this earth, wherever we are in the universe. You know, it's your mind can't even comprehend what that is. This is it. This is where you get to take your thoughts and manifest them. And we're always doing it constantly. Wherever you're at right now, whatever, wherever you find yourself, you created that with your thoughts. Imagine that. It's amazing. And imagine that we get to, we get to create again in this moment, in this moment, in this moment, and this one, we get to create again. The stuff is all there. It's like this formless energy that's available to us. Yeah. Every moment we can harness it in and color it with magic and create beautiful things, you know, or we can choose to keep learning with the lower densities. There's no judgment on either side. It's true. Like, you know, we just like, oh, if somebody's on the street begging for money and they're alcoholics or drug addicts or whatever, there you don't, we can't judge that. We don't know what that person needs to grow, if they need to die or if that soul decided because they decided to come here and experience that you know let things be and just feel yes. a connection to that like you're that's still your brother and your sister you know experiencing mm-hmm. that vibration so who are we to judge like that that's a good bad wrong or right right we need to get rid of the mentality of separation and judgment to grow into a consciousness that we're actually you know gonna walk into anyways right because everything's changing in the universe right now the energy's changing uh, from yeah. a three-dimensional energy to a fourth and a fifth and people might say what is she talking about <laughs> but that's a different you know whole different thing but but it's i'm listening very deeply yeah. because you're I'm yeah you're I'm making saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're also making a great point for people who even don't understand. They can tune into your energy and notice something I've noticed very deeply is that our natural energy is always moving forward. It's always focusing and flowing forward. So that's the na- our natural tendency. Like a seed wants to bloom into a flower and yeah. an acorn wants to bloom into a, an oak tree an egg wants to you know evolve into the bird you know yeah. the cocoon into the butterfly that's the motion that we always want to be flowing forward into and aligning our energy with so when we do that this is something very interesting for our listeners today when we do that the rest of the stuff the strife, the struggle, all of that. And this is something you and I have worked with a lot too. It falls away by itself, right? Because think about the life cycle. When we're just flowing with the life cycle and we're enjoying every single moment all along the way, even in autumn, which is a season when the leaves are dying, they're falling off the trees. It's natural. It's going to be recycled into the earth and the worms are going to enjoy it. You know what I mean? When we focus on life like that, we get the most juice out of life. (laughs) Speaking of juice, do you know what I mean? We do. We get the most juice out of it. And we and we we dissolve all that other stuff that doesn't serve our highest and greatest good and everyone else's highest and greatest good around us. So isn't that a, a great way to spend our time on this planet? Yes, I know. And like <laughs> we, you know, I was talking about manifesting and uh, you know, I, I suggest that people have vision boards that they really be aware of their thoughts because that's what's bringing in their reality, mm-hmm. how they're feeling and, and be very clear about what you want, right? And, and, and to change into a higher vibrational state of being, food is important because it does bring you up vibrationally. You know that, I know that because we've all, you know, I've done raw foods, you've done raw foods. There's no judgment on that either, but I think that that does bring you to a higher alignment to source. But after that, you still have to have the attitude, the thought forms, and to have the love because there's a lot of people that do raw foods or are vegetarians or vegans and they start having, or people that start having an attitude of like, I'm better than you. Like the ego comes yes. in through the back door saying, yeah. I'm better than you now because now I'm a guru and I'm this and I'm that and I'm going to judge you. So the judgment steps in. Yeah. Right. And you're horrible because you're eating that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, a diet, I love the point you're making because diet is a good way to 
uh, raise your vibration if you're not able to change it on your own, right? We were talking about Dr. Emoto who can change the energy of any water. He could drink any, you know, and I can do that too with the food. Like if I was going to eat McDonald's today, I could raise the vibration and eat it too. So there's, we got to be careful ourselves that we're not judging other people too, because we all know 90 year old men, we've heard this again and again, who smoke cigarettes and their vibration (laughs) is so high. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's energy. Energy is everything. Number one. Number one is energy. It's not even food. It's energy because, you know, there's people that live to be 125 years old who are doing shots of whiskey and smoking cigars. (laughs) We all know that. (laughs) Yeah. But, but when, before you get to the place where you can do that, and we all have the ability to get there before you get, before you get to that place, it's a good idea to use things to help you. And you know what? And, and Dr. Will Tuttle was on my living lighter radio show. And he was talking about that, about the stages that you go through when you first change your diet and your consciousness is raising through your diet. It's a great show. And he was talking about how, you know, there's the angry vegan stage where you're just, you know, you're criticizing everybody and cutting everybody up because they're not eating vegan food you know and that's a it's a lower state of consciousness that you actually end up transcending from but my point is is it's very useful to have too I needed that stage I had that stage I was like oh my gosh how could you wear leather shoes I couldn't understand why we needed to wear leather shoes you know I just couldn't comprehend I was because I needed that Irma to protect my sensitive you know the sensitive butterfly that was emerging I needed that at the time. I needed that anger. (laughs) And it's all okay, you know? It's all okay. Yeah. In the end, if you're going to love, you love everything. Yes. And you don't judge anything. And you accept things the way that they show up. So there's no criticism about anyone or anything. That's the Mm -hmm. the place we we need to go to to actually manifest exactly what we want instantly. Right? Yeah, but that's... That's the divine feminine. So that's one part of the equation. But that is definitely the era that we're moving into right now. As you mentioned, there are shifts happening. And we're moving in there because we've been focused on the the masculine, you know, and and it's become imbalanced a little bit. So we're moving back into the feminine, which is balancing us. But I love that. It's a huge part, especially right now. Right now is a huge part is the receiving, all-encompassing, loving, divine feminine you know, the gentle, creative aspect of us. And then we use, you know, as a business coach, I use the other part, the divine masculine part to create systems in your business and set up your website and, and, you know, initiate and lead, you know, so we like both energies, but yeah. (laughs) What's that? I said, I need that more, but I'm going to let you go because I know you have a, you know, other call to do, but I I thank you so much for sharing this video with me. I hope that people get inspired with it. Um, What else can I say? Um, I look forward to growing with you in the next year because I'm going to keep you on (laughs) and we're going to manifest some beautiful stuff co-creating together because we're all one and uh, I can't wait to see what we come up with next. So Anyways, thank you so much, Gina. It was a pleasure. It was actually the most amazing sharing ever in my whole life. uh... Thank you, Irma. It's such a (laughs) joy to work with you. You're such a beautiful soul. And I'm honored to connect with you. So thank you, my dear. Yes. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Okay. Bye, beautiful. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.